Hi everyone, welcome to Sandra's Bible Tales. So one of the requests that I had, one of the comments that I had, um, I believe his name is Daniel, he had asked me if I can talk more about my dreams and coincidentally, my testimony, um, I had dreams. Like actually, I backslid from the Lord and one of the things that led me to come back to him, not because it was one of the, not because it was that, I wanted to come back to God. I desperately wanted to come back to God. I just didn't, I couldn't find my way back to him. I was already so in sin that I didn't know how to get rid of it. It's like if you can envision, and I just came to my mind now, if you can envision a little bug being trapped on a spider web and it just can't find its way out. So the only way it can get out is if, if someone were to literally, maybe a human, get it, right? Or, you know, get, pick it out and and rescue it and that's how I felt I felt like I was entangled in my sin and I, I couldn't find a way out so I was already disgusted by the world I was grieved my heart was saddened uh, I didn't understand what people meant when they're saying oh but Sandra like you have never tried this you know that's why you don't like it and if you try it you'll like it and then half the things I tried when I was in the world I was like okay now I'm, I'm even more disgusted by it like it has like I don't, I don't get it. What's so fun about drinking? And what's so fun about this? And what's so fun about that? And like to me, it was just, ugh, you know? It left me feeling shame. It left me feeling empty. It left me feeling lonely. It left me feeling sad. And I'm like, I, I, I see it now. The, the thing is that deception is there. So because of the temporary pleasure, because there's pleasure in sin, but it's very temporary. Because of the temporary pleasure, they don't they don't see that all the, the permanent um, feelings and results that come because of that permanent um, pleasure they don't see that it's like they're blinded to that they don't they don't put two and two together so they they don't care they, they'll they'll get drugged up again and, and they'll do things over and over and over again knowing that it's gonna leave them feeling empty but at that moment that they're doing it they forget about the emptiness and because they haven't tried God because it's easy for the people in the world to say yeah but you haven't tried this and you haven't tried that but then the reality is if they were to try God they would never want to go back to the world because it's just, I mean, it's, I, I understand it's easier to fall than it is to rise. As a matter of fact, um, I remember I saw it on TV, I think it was, or a post or something, and it was a picture, of, uh, I remember a picture of a table, and there was one person was over the table and the other person was under, and then one person was trying to push the person that was down on the floor up, and the person that was down on the floor was trying to push the person on the table down. Now, who do you think is going to win? Most likely, the person that is down is going to win, unless the person that is up is way stronger than the person that is down. So it's always easier. It's always easier. So when when I was when I fell into sin and 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 I promise you I had like I was like man God I want you back in my life so bad. But even secular music like I would try to put on Christian music and it was boring to me. Like I couldn't find pleasure in my God anymore. Like sin was like it had I, I can't even explain it because I, when I was in the things of God worship was so beautiful. It was life. And then now when I'm trying to get back to God, it's like I would have to force myself to listen to it and it wasn't pleasurable to me. So I understand why the people of the world, they some of them, they can't find the things of God desirable because they're so into their sin. It, it, it's, it's horrible. And I believe that once you backslide to come back to God, it's even harder. I, I really believe that it's harder. You know, you know that you knew the truth and, and, you, and you left. So one of the things that helped me, I mean, God had a lot of, mercy and a lot of grace on me and even even in my times of of being in the world and going clubbing and doing this and doing that i always loved god like i always had a certain degree of fear of god where i was like okay this i will not do like i, I was like this i will not do like i'm not gonna pass this line so i was being deceived because i was like oh but this is not that bad just like the 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 analogy of the frog that when you put a frog in boiling water it'll jump right out but if you put it in cold water and you start putting the oven little by little, the, the, the frog's body adjusts to the temperature where you can kill the frog and it won't know. And that's what I feel like the enemy did to me. The enemy, it was just deception because I never meant to leave God to begin with. I, I was angry at the church. I meant to leave the church. But because there was anger in my heart and I didn't deal with it and anger and bitterness and not of God. And then that leads to unforgiveness and all this stuff. And I got caught up in that. I started backsliding. And to the point that it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. Like the water keeps getting hot and hot and hotter. And um, I was almost seven years away from the church. I think it was like seven years. Not away from the church because I would go to church. I would go to different churches. Just not not in my, in my relationship with God where it should be. Like I was listening to secular music. I was hanging out with secular people. I was going to secular places. I was doing secular things. I mean, 
just living in the world but with with love for God in my heart which is very weird I know um, but I, that's how I felt at least and God was merciful throughout because he would still listen to my prayers he would still manifest um, his love to me he would still manifest his glory to me which I, I, I I'm still like I'm like God I don't understand how I could even see diamonds like which is a sign of God's glory when I knew that I wasn't completely right with God but I would still pray and I would still worship in my ignorance because I didn't think I was really doing so much evil. It's super hard to uh, to explain. God just showed me his mercy throughout. And um, when I completely wanted to give my heart back to the Lord and I just wanted to get out of everything in the world, it was so hard for me. And I remember I told God, man, Lord, I want to, but I don't know how. Like, I don't even know my way back. And I, I had, I, one night I had three dreams back to back. And I remember I was already like, man, what's wrong with me? Like, I'm not myself. Like, I was being very compulsive when you have compulsive behaviors that's completely demonic i mean there's no peace in compulsiveness and anxiety i was very anxious i was very like worried about everything i was like concerned with stupid stuff that doesn't even matter and i'm like man what's wrong with me and i knew it i'm like this has to be demonic influence and i know how to renounce and i know how to do stuff but when you're not in god and you i mean come on huh? the the you know what i mean i was fooling myself so i came to a point that I remember one night I had three dreams back to back and, and the first one I was, I see this big beautiful palace. It's like a mansion and I'm like, wow, it's so beautiful. And it was my house and, and I'm like, wow, I live in this place. Like, I didn't know I lived in this place. I had seven rooms. It had like five pools. It had a yacht in the backyard and the yacht, you know, it would the sea and everything. And in the yacht, there was a pool inside the yacht. And I remember I told my grandma, wow, grandma, I didn't even know we lived in such a beautiful, huge palace. Like, what is this? And I remember entering two rooms and they were completely empty and they looked like they had dust and spider webs. And I'm like, man, how come these rooms are empty? I'm like, I never noticed that these rooms were empty. And um, then I noticed that there's like a whole mess of strangers on my yacht and they're dancing and they're partying away and they're drinking. And I'm like, who invited these people? Like, how are they? How did they get to my yacht? I'm like, I can't kick them out because somehow, some way they're in my yacht, meaning that I must have let them in. I just don't remember letting them in. I have no idea how they gained access. And so that was my first dream. And then in the second dream, again, there was this beautiful palace mansion and some guy, he who was my servant, I guess, I don't know, he opens the door, says, come in. But when I'm going in, the neighbor opens their palace and I and I notice that in the front of their of their house, they have a family portrait. And when this family is walking out, they are not the same family that is on the picture of the family portrait. And, and so I tell him, hey, I'm like, do you guys live there? And they say yes. And I'm like, it, you know, I'm like, I'm like, okay, but that's not them. So I start asking them questions and they cannot answer the same answer. Like they are not in agreement. They're all divided. And the children, that their children have faces that are of fear. They're like this, like scared. And I'm like, man, these people are weird. Like, I feel like they're lying to me. And that was the second dream. And then in the third dream, again, I'm in another house and the person that lives beside me, they, they leave the room and the room is empty. And I'm thinking whether I should change rooms. And, and then the room has like three closets and I'm like, I really don't understand what's going on. So I, I, one of the pastors that he's one of my good friends, father, I would always go to him because he had the gift of dream interpretation. He's a pastor. And I was like, man, I don't want to bore him again. Cause I'm always calling him for dreams. Like I would always be calling him for dreams. Um, may he rest in peace. He's no longer with us. Um, but, um, I remember I was like, I don't want to bother him, but God knew that God wanted me to, to, to ask him because that same day, his daughter calls me and says, hey, I'm in my parents' house. She didn't live here in Kendall. She didn't have any idea. She said, hey, I'm in my parents' house. Why don't you come visit me? And I said, man, this is of God because I didn't want to bother your dad. But now that I'm going over, I might as well talk to him. And she was like, yeah, come over. When I go over, he wasn't there. He was at church. He was praying. He was in one of Vigilia, one of those all night prayer things. Um, but we were talking, me and her and her mom, we were talking. We were there like till about one o'clock in the morning. Her, her dad comes in. And um, her dad's wife, Pastora, says, oh, Sandra, tell him your dream. And I, and I said, um, Pastor, I had three dreams back to back. And he's like, tell me. And, and I tell him the dreams. And he says, he goes, Sandra, he goes, are you ready for the interpretation? And I said, yes. He goes, remember that God rebukes and corrects those that he loves. And I said, yes. I'm like, I'm ready. And he says, what God is showing you is that you are the temple. You are that big, beautiful palace. He goes, remember that. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit, that we are the, the temple of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is showing you how he sees you. You're big and beautiful. He goes, however, there's two rooms that are empty in your house. And he goes, and remember what the Bible says about empty rooms, that when there's empty rooms, that then that's when the evil spirits go and they look for more evil spirits to bring them. He goes, those people that were in the yacht, 
he was like, you invited them. He goes, the thing is that they cannot possess you because evil spirits cannot possess Christians that are sealed with the Holy Spirit, but they can influence you. That's why they're not inside of your palace, but they're outside in the yacht because you gave them access and that's why they're having a party with you. And like he continues, he goes, the second dream, he goes, that you had, he goes, those neighbors, he goes, they weren't the people on the family portrait because they were deceiving, they were being something that they're not, he goes, and the thing is that when you confronted them, and you started asking them questions, they were afraid that you were catching on and they were afraid that you were, um, what is this called when, when you, when you unmask something, when you, when you discover something. And he says, and that's why that they had that, that fear upon them. He's like, because they're not supposed to be influencing you and they were not in your house. They were your neighbors because again, they're influencing you. And then he, he just continued. He goes, all those three dreams are all in one, the same dream. It's just God showing you three times because the bible says that where there's three like three witnesses you know that's confirming and i said man pastor i go i know that this is true because before you got here i was telling your daughter how i've been compulsive and and, and i feel like i need deliverance i'm like i feel like there's um you know like a, i've opened the door to too much sin and um, i'm like what do i do i'm like do i do i go to a delivering session what do i do and he was like no he goes sandra remember that the bible says resist the devil and he will flee from you he goes oh what you got to do is you got to recommit to god and you got to resist the devil and i said you know what that's exactly what i'm gonna do and i said god it's hard it hasn't been easy it's hard to come back to you i had tried it i had gone to church i think i had been there for like three months and i was like i cannot do this like to me i felt like it was religious i didn't even see the power like it was just weird I, I felt like i didn't fit in anymore i'm like this is not the same anymore so i'm like my god i don't care what it takes i'm like i need you in my life i'm like there's no sense i personally do not enjoy life without you not anymore like i'm like i can't like i don't i don't feel i don't understand how these people can 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 maybe because i already witnessed god it was different you know when you already witnessed something you already witnessed the light you can't go back to, to dark maybe a poor person is happy in, in poverty but then once they witness riches and once they witness money to go back to property to go back to living in poverty it's it's horrible and that's what i felt like i felt like man not yet. i don't want to live like this anymore but it was just so hard and um and i remember i went to, to i went on my social media that day and i put on facebook i'm like i'm, I'm deciding to recommit myself to god so I'm letting all my friends know, like, no more clubs, no more this, no more that. And I was like, these people are going to think I'm crazy. I'm like, but I don't care, Lord. I'm sold out for you. I, I made a decision. I don't care how hard it is. And it, it's been, I'm not going to say it's super hard, but it has been hard because it's a commitment that I'm not right away experiencing everything. You know, it's like if God, again, he has to regain my trust. You know, it's like a relationship when, when there's lack of trust, when someone cheated on someone and you want to get back together, there's just a healing process. There's like a, a trust process. That's what I feel like it's been happening. So I'm very grateful though where I'm at. I'm like, God, you've accelerated. Like I've seen his hand. I've seen his mercy. I've seen his grace. So I'm very thankful. But um, I just want to let you guys know, man, God is the most beautiful thing that there is. You know, the Bible says in, in, in the book of Matthew 13, 44, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again and then in his joy went and sold all that he had and bought that field. This man didn't care about anything he had. He said, man, I want that treasure. But if I take it, they're going to say that it's not mine because it's in a field that's not mine. So I'm going to sell everything I have, buy that field, and then that treasure will belong to me. He discovered God. He discovered the beauty of God and he wasn't going to let anything or anyone uh, take it away from him. You know, my heart now, I, I, I do pray a lot for the backsliders. I understand where they're coming from. I understand that it's difficult to come to God, but it's not impossible and the devil is a liar. I had a dream with a friend of mine that she's in the world. She backslid too. And in this dream, it was so clear. I was in my father's house. It was a huge palace and it was surrounded by the sea. It was like hidden. Like nobody, no, no one had access to it. You would have to go on a boat, a special boat that would take you there. And I remember I left my father's house for whatever reason. And then I, I went to my friend's house. I remember I went to my friend's house. And I went to go get her. I wanted to. I wanted her to show me how to get to my father's house. I, I, I knew she would remember because she had been there before. So I told her, let's go to my father's house. I want you to take me to my father's house. And she was like, I can't. And I said, why not? She goes, because look at all these people in my house. It was a homeless of people. They were like smoking. They were like smoking weed. And they were just passed out in her floor. And they looked like bums, straight up like bums. And I'm like, man, kick them out. Tell them that you're going to go with me. And she was like, man, I can't do that. I'm like, why not? She was like, I can't, you know. And then she went to her balcony. And when she told some of the people, oh, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with my friend, you know, out. They were like, they were mocking her. And they were like, ah, ha, ha, you think that you're going to go out? And they were like mocking her. I'm like, well, what do these people think? Like, they own you. This is your house. Kick them out. And she was scared. So she was like, I can't do that. So finally, she says she's going to go with me. And when she's going to go with me, she's like, man, but your father's house is so far. Like, we're going to take forever to get there. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's so close. Like, 
it's right around the corner and she was like no it's so so far and I instantly, when I woke up, I had the interpretation of the dream. The dream is that that palace is my father's house. It's God's kingdom. It's God. It's heaven. It's how to get to God. But the only way you can get there is only.